My name is Katarzyna Suda-Puchacz and I'm representing Implementing Authority for European Programs. Our institution is responsible for first level control in this reporting, in this programming period. And today I would like to make a short speech about the future of the Central Europe Programme, namely Central Europe Programme 2014-2020. Uh, Central Europe 2020 program will be one of the 14th of transnational programs implemented within the European Territorial Cooperation Objective. Uh, the program area will be slightly modified in comparison to the current program. There will be uh, eight member states involved in the current program, but also one new member state. It will be Croatia. But there will be no Ukraine, uh, so it, it's slightly modified. Uh, on this slide you can see the, uh, the program area map. So as you can see, it's more or less the same as in this uh, programming period. Uh, now the program is at the stage of developing the strategy. Um, uh, so far, the uh, uh, institutions involved in the programming process, uh, they uh, managed to develop the four first stages, so the general objective of the new program, thematic objectives, priority access and program specific objectives. Uh, the general objective of the new program is cooperating to make Central European cities and regions a better place to live and work. So this is the general idea of the, of the new uh, Central Europe program. On this basis and of the, on the basis of the thematic uh, objectives predefined at the European Union level, uh, the program choose uh, four thematic objectives uh, which when, uh, were uh, already translated into program-specific priority axes. As you can see, there, there will be four priority axes, axes uh, one for innovation, one for energy, one for environment, and one for transport. Uh, the budget of the whole program is not, not defined yet, but uh, we know for sure that it will be uh, higher in, uh, than in this programming period. It's not uh, set, uh, the def definite figures are not set yet because uh, program authorities does know the exact uh, contribution of the member state in the program. So, uh, so the, the whole budget is not set yet. Uh, the program also uh, did not uh, divide the budget into project priority access, so we do not know how this budget will be split into uh, priority access yet. But operational program is now being developed. It's at the last level of the development because in the uh, in December or January next year, it will be submitted to the European Commission for the approval. In, within this priority axis, uh, the program has uh, developed specific objectives which are linked to the investment priorities predefined uh, at the EU level. As you can see, the priority axis one is linked to the investment priority one B, and the program specified two specific objectives in this priority. The first one is strengthening regional innovation capacity by improving framework condition for innovation, and the second one is supporting skills and knowledge to increase the innovation capacity along regional value chains. In this uh, in each of these specific objectives, there will be a list of uh, thematic topics that will be supported. If you are now uh, interested in these topics, they are, uh, uh, they are ac uh, accessible on the program website. 
Uh, on the program website, you can see uh, uh, a document which is uh, uh, named uh, Defining Central Europe Program uh, Guidelines for Stakeholders. And in this document, there is a, in each specific objective, there is a list of preliminary topics which will be funded, supported within the next program. So if you are interested in the specific topics already, you can find it in this document. So uh, in this uh, priority axis, there is uh, two specific objectives, uh, first and one. In priority axis two, which is uh, related to the energy, uh, there are two investment priority linked to this priority, uh, to investment priority to this axis, and there will be three specific objectives. Uh, supporting energy efficiency and renewable energy uses in public infrastructures and housing, and uh, supporting low carbon strategies in cities and regions, um, reducing energy dependency and tackling cl climate change, and supporting greener mobility in urban functional areas. Uh, in priority access, uh, number three, uh, the, uh, this priority is linked to two predefined uh, investment priorities, 6C, uh, uh, 6C and 6E. And there will be also three specific objectives uh, in this uh, axis. And th this priority axis is for environment. And the last priority axis, it will be transport. Uh, in this priority axis, there will be two investment priorities linked to this axis and two specific objectives. Now the program is uh, at the stage of uh, development, the final version of the operational program. As you can see, the preparation for the uh, next programming period started uh, in 2011. In this year, the uh, program institutions set up a steering, com a steering group um, to strategically guide the ongoing process of preparing the new program. Uh, last year, uh, this, uh, this steering group uh, identified uh, the challenges, the uh, needs and potentials for the new program and also developed the progr new program uh, area. And this year is more um, intense in preparation. Uh, um, institutions uh, which are involved in the programming process, they set up a program strategy, developed the program uh, uh, specific access and objectives, and also organized uh, national uh, consult consultation on the program content in eight member states. Uh, these um, Consultations were made by national uh, uh, events and also by online survey, which was um, um, carried out uh, in April, I, as far as I remember. Now the program is developing the, the final version of the operational program. And in next year, in January probably, it will be submitted to the European Commission for the approval and also next year, program authorities uh, are planning to um, launch first calls for the new programming period. But uh, no dates are known now. It will be, um, I think, dependent on the, on the time when Commission will approve the, the whole program. Uh, but now you can uh, find uh, already interesting materials about the new programming period. Especially, um, I would uh, recommend to, you, uh, to visit Central Europe Programme website. Uh, there you can uh, find this, uh, this guidance for stakeholders, which is uh, quite a uh, big document with uh, many uh, information about the uh, programming process, how these priority access were developed, how the needs and challenges of the program uh, were defined, and as I uh, previously said, also the 
preliminary, preliminary list of the topics will, which will be funded in the um, next programming period is also in this document. For Polish partners, uh, you can also uh, use the website, uh, Polish website, which is in Polish language, Europa Środkowa Gov.pl, where, where all the information from the um, general website of the program are also translated and put in this uh, website. Uh, unfortunately, uh, our institution is not involved directly in the process of the programming, so uh, I do not, uh, uh, I'm not able to give you very detailed information, but all these uh, information and questions about the new programming period you can address to the uh, Joint Technical Secretariat, because this institution will be the same in the next programming period. So JTS in Vienna will be the same and the managing authority in the city of Vienna will be also uh, the same. So the institutions the, uh, involved in the uh, programming um, of the program and the implementation of the program will be more or less the same. Uh, here you have contact for, for, uh, to our institutions. Institutions, if you have any question, you can also address these questions via our emails. We can provide you with the information which we will uh, give, uh, we will ask for this information to the JTS. So if you have any questions, please do not hesitate. <laughs>